States of America. Since this is the United case, one year ago, we said the corporations had the same rights of people to spend their money however they want on elections, with almost no restrictions, and that's the way it should be because corporations are people. Don't you see what's happening in the United States? We voted to give the corporations even more control over our elections than they already have. And we sold out the American people one more time. I'm Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and I voted against this awful idea. I'm Justice Clarence Thomas, and I'm an Oreo. I believe my colleagues just bought the best democracy money can buy. Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. My name is David Delk. I'm the president of the Portland chapter of the Alliance for Democracy and host of this series of half-hour weekly cable TV programs produced here at the studios of Portland Community Media in Portland, Oregon. The Alliance for Democracy is a movement of progressive populists dedicated to ending corporate domination. If you agree with us that the ever-increasing levels of corporate money and corporate lobbyists in the American political process undermines or eliminates our ability to describe ourselves as self-governing, sovereign people, you should consider do, uh, joining the Alliance for Democracy. More information is available at either our national website, www.thealliancefordemocracy.org, or from our Portland chapter website at www.afd-pdx.org. Today our guest is David Cobb. David has been on our program before, and uh, we're going to be talking about corporate personhood. We're talk about the Citizens United versus the FEC case. So uh, the Supreme Court gave uh, corporations free speech rights to spend their money, their corporate treasury money, uh, however they see fit in our elections, and what that means for. The democrat democratic process and democracy itself. So welcome to the show again, David. Thank you. It's good. a pleasure to be here. Good, good. Uh, we talked about Citizens United. Citizens United, of course, is the Supreme Court case just about a year ago, uh, which allows corporations to spend their money, and actually unions also. Uh, so I think they were trying to be fair. Uh, no, they weren't trying to be fair, David. Uh, although they really had to, that was one distinction they could not make. But what is clear in the Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission, the court overturned a democratically enacted law that was designed a, a bipartisan McCain, as in John McCain, Feingold, as in Russ Feingold, Democrat and Republican, bipartisan campaign finance reform law uh, that was meant to protect the integrity of our elections. And the court said that that uh, that law treated corporations as a, quote, oppressed minority, overturned that law, and said that now both corporations, unions, and wealthy individuals can spend unlimited amounts of money as independent expenditures to influence elections. They have basically legalized corporate bribery. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was a series of Supreme Court cases prior to that which suggested that we could limit money. 
Oh, that's right. There had been a hundred-year uh, precedent by which the, the, the federal courts had said without doubt that states had the inherent power and right uh, to regulate uh, corporate money in elections. So this is an example, an outrageous example of judicial activism run amok. Uh, the Roberts Court is going down in history already as the single most activist court we've seen since the Lochner era uh, amongst lawyers. It, it, it's absolutely outrageous. And, and any principal concern um, who has been concerned about judicial activism ought to be concerned about the Roberts Court. Okay. And the Lochner decision, what is that? Well, the Lochner era uh, was one decision amongst many uh, where the Supreme Court was overruling laws passed during uh, the administration of Franklin Delano Roosevelt and that Congress that was trying to get us out of the Depression. And so there were a whole series of court uh, decisions overturning laws that were attempting to deal with the Depression. And frankly, David Delk, uh, I think that we're going to kind of, I hope that we'll ultimately see this Congress begin to act in the same sort of way. Because frankly, let's be clear, what's going on in Wisconsin is not really an effort to balance the budget. These so-called austerity programs are really about breaking the backs of working people uh, and in stealing and, and shoving a corporate agenda down our throats. If we really wanted to balance the budget, that could easily be done by taxing the rich. Very easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, and what, what kind of taxes would you put on the rich? Well, I would actually uh, put a progressive uh, income tax uh, on the wealthy, you know, the way we had before the Reagan administration came in and, and stripped them away. You know, uh, it, it's very clear that uh, the, the taxing system of both corporations and wealthy individuals can be done. And, and actually, not all, they actually, and studies show it actually helps the economy. It doesn't hurt the economy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd love to do a show sometime where we actually uh, break down uh, the importance of taxing the wealthy. Okay, all right. Well, maybe maybe we'll have to do that again when you're up here in Portland or, uh, again. I'd like that. Soon. Okay, great. Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, corporate personhood is an idea that corporations actually have the same rights that you and I do, but yet corporations are very different than you and I. Well, of course they are, David. I mean, let's be clear about something. I mean, corporations are nothing more than artificial entities created in order to allow uh, people to come together and do business. So I have no problem with corporations. I think corporations should be uh, uh, not only allowed to exist, but they should be put to appropriate public use in order to do large-scale projects or even small projects. Uh, I, and in fact, I don't have any problem with the idea of limited liability. Uh, what I do have a problem with is the idea that this concentrated capital can somehow claim the same inherent sacred rights that you and I have as human beings. That is outrageous. Uh, remember that the U.S. Constitution does not create rights. The U.S. Constitution recognizes pre-existing rights, rights that we have by virtue of being human. So the idea that a corporation has any inherent constitutional rights is flawed on its face. Any rights that a corporation have uh, has should be a legal right subject to the democratic process. Okay, and, and because we have, or not because we have, but because the Supreme Court has through a whole series of decisions decided for us by activist judges that corporations have our rights, what have, the, what have been some of the effects on, on we as a people or on our democracy. Well, David, let's just like let's just break it down. I mean, uh, of course, the Citizens United case is probably the most recent and most horrific example of it because the court basically legalized bribery in our elections. I mean, millions of dollars are being spent now in every election cycle, flooding the airwaves so that we're never able to actually have a genuine discourse and dialogue uh, during the election. And of course, that's what elections should be. It should be the time where we, the people, actually have discussion and discourse around what sort of society we want to have. But it doesn't just stop with corporate money and elections, and the Citizens United case is not alone. You know, environmental protection laws have been overturned on the basis that corporations' equal protection rights have been overturned. Uh, consumer laws have been overturned in a famous case called Nike versus Caskey. Uh, consumer protection laws have been overturned. In addition to that, uh, laws attempting to protect workers have been overturned. Uh, laws of, uh, attempting to protect the, the safety and health of the public have been overturned. So the reality is that the doctrine, it's not just an individual ca case, it's not just even an individual law, but the doctrine of corporations having constitutional rights is an underpinning for how the ruling elite have hijacked our government, they have hijacked 
our legal system, in fact, are turning our legal system against us to make it impossible for we the people to participate in a genuine democratic republic. It is an un-American idea, and it's time for we the people to rise up and to state unequivocally we need an, an amendment to the United States Constitution to make it clear corporations are not persons, they do not have constitutional rights. And if your viewers of uh, the Populist Dialogues would like to join over 103,000 people and more, I urge you to go to the website at www.movetoamend.org and sign that petition. And if you don't have access to the web or, or if you'd just like to call somebody and talk about this and talk about how to join this movement, you can call us at 707-269-0984 and talk to a living, breathing human being about how we can build a democracy movement in the United States. Great. You did a presentation recently here in Portland, and one of the things that you talked about was belly buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You know, it's funny, David. Uh, you know, people, the, the idea of human rights and corporate rights can, can be confusing, and sometimes uh, I will actually show my belly button, like so, and I will say, check it, those of you watching at home and make sure that you have a belly button, because if you do, then that means that you have inherent human rights. Uh, but a corporation, of course, is not uh, born, uh, a corporate, uh, and so therefore they don't have those same kind of inherent human rights that all of us who have belly buttons. And by the way, that means Tea Party adherents, Libertarians, Republicans, Greens, Democrats, Independents, we're all human beings, so we have inherent sacred rights uh, that cannot be infringed upon by the democratic process. But corporations are nothing more than legal entities that are created to do business. They don't have inherent rights. They can have legal rights, but they're subject to the democratic process. And I think that that's really the reason that we're seeing such a, an uprising amongst the people who recognize that this doctrine of corporate constitutional rights is undermining our ability to have a functioning democratic republic. And we have been seeing an uprising of people on the increasing amount of consciousness about this issue and about labor issues and labor rights and, and human rights in general. It's kind of been very stirring and uh, inspiring to see so many of these people that we thought were just watching TV and being very passive becoming very active. Indeed, there is a movement going on in this country and that movement is broad and it cuts across ideologies, it cu cuts across partisan labels, uh, and it's also deep. There are more and more people who are actually getting involved and in helping to create a new society and creating worker cooperatives and creating public-private partnerships and, and, and they're protesting and they're, uh, you know, the people are on the move and it's very exciting. You're absolutely right about that. Uh, and I think that I wanna uh, encourage people to remember that you know, Rosa Parks, the great champion of the civil rights movement, was not just tired one day. She didn't just decide that she wasn't going to give up her seat on the bus. She had organizing training. She had a, a strategy in place that she had developed along with other whites and blacks at the Highlander Center. And I want to encourage your viewers, if you're really stirred by this conversation, uh, not only to join the local Alliance for Democracy chapter, uh, not only sign up on the petition at movetoamend.org, but I invite you on October 7th through the 9th to come with me to Humboldt County, California, October 7th through the 9th, and participate in a strategy session, a full weekend strategy session, where we the people will help to design strategies and tactics where we can actually take our country back. Uh, you can find out more about this at that telephone number, 707-269-0984. But imagine a full weekend strategy session uh, where you're learning the techniques and the tactics of what it's gonna take to actually Actually take our country back from these corporate hooligans who have hijacked it from us. It's going to be an exciting thing, David, and uh, I hope that folks from Portland will come on down to Humboldt yeah, County and, and have some hospitality. Yeah, great. Yeah, and for those who may not want to go to or cannot go to Humboldt County, we're planning on having a training here in Portland with you. Absolutely. I, I will be coming uh, at some point. I'll come for a full day-long training. It'll be, think of it as a training for trainers so that we can continue to build this movement. And that'll be a day-long event. And if you'd like to really dig in for a weekend-long event, that'll be October 7th through the 9th. And if you can't come to either one of those, the Alliance for Democracy meets on a monthly basis. Uh, these are people who are engaged day in and day out in the movement that it's going to take to take our country. Great. Good. 
Right. Yeah. And the Alliance for Democracy here in Portland, we have twice monthly meetings on the first, uh, on the second, and fourth Monday of the month. Plus, we have a chapter of Move to Amend here, which meets on the third Wednesday of the month. So a lot of opportunities for people to be involved with our activities right here in Portland. But there are Alliance for Democracy chapters around the country. There are chapters and affiliates of Move to Amend around the country. Uh, then there are other organizations which do similar kinds of work uh, without quite the focus on amending the Constitution, which also uh, advance our causes. There's no doubt, and I really want to point out, David, that at the Move to Amend Coalition, you've got not only the Alliance for Democracy involved, but Detroit Women of Color, Democracy Unlimited of Humboldt County, Reclaim Democracy, the Independent Progressive Politics Network, and the Progressive Democrats of America and the Green Party actually working together, and Tea Party members are actually working on this coalition. So, again, like you've got progressives from both the Green Party and the Democratic Party working together. You've got libertarians, uh, independents, you've got Tea Party folks. I mean, there is something very exciting going on in this movement. And I'm, again, encouraging your, your viewers uh, to join that movement. And let's just take a moment to acknowledge, if you're watching this program, uh, if you're watching uh, Portland uh, media, uh, you already know that the corporate media news is mostly propaganda. I mean, we just need to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. you know, corporate media does a great job of covering sports and providing entertainment. There's no doubt about that. But when it comes to news, they're mostly lying to us. Uh, so if we're going to really build the kind of movement that we need in this country, it's going to be because it's brought to you on um, independent radio, uh, people's radio, and uh, programs like this one. Yes, and I will also point out to viewers that most communities have community stations such as we're broadcasting from here in Portland and it's actually a very easy process to become a producer, become a host, or to do programs like this. So uh, I encourage people to, to do that kind of work. Uh, and, the, and of course uh, there's the, the uh, Amy Goodman's Democracy Now! program which is, airs uh, on many of these stations also. She's a great advocate for democracy. Absolutely. <laughs> and remember, you know, democracy means the people rule. It means the people have the power. And today, almost nobody from any political party, from any ideology, really believes that we the people actually control this government. You know, the, the meltdown that we just saw in, in this country is an example where the Wall Street bankers, banksters, if you will, the, the, the corporate hooligans basically destroyed our economy. And then we're, they're rewarded with trillions of tax dollars uh, as a result. And, you know, People across the political spectrum are appropriately outraged by that. And we're saying at, join us at movetoamend.org so we can actually build the movement that it's going to take to actually take our economy back, uh, take our politics back, take our legal system back, ultimately take our, our media back, take our health care institutions back. We deserve a different country. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. It, it always surprises me. I don't know why, but it always does. When I, when I hear... Uh, spokespeople like the President of the United States describe the United States as being the greatest democracy of the world and then not actually advocate democracy here in the United States. And my thought right now is that uh, recently we had this uh, stirring in the Mideast uh, and President Obama uh, spoke about how uh, how we need to have a democratic system in, in, in Egypt specifically. At the same time, we had the situation in Wisconsin where the workers are demanding to have their rights recognized and to not be attacked by uh, the corporations and by the governor there. In. But Obama didn't stand up and give any support for that. Well, you know, that's a hard thing, but it, it, it is the truth that uh, President Obama did not stand and so far has not stood with the workers of Wisconsin, and not just union workers, but the workers of Wisconsin who are standing up for collective bargaining rights. Uh, you remember that it is because people organized in unions that we were able to create a 40-hour work week. It's the reason that we were able to have weekends off. I mean, you know, all workers, all of us benefit when there is uh, when there's a vibrant union sector. The more people who are organized in the trade unions, the more workers benefit. That's proven time and time again. The higher the number of folks who are involved in organized trade unions, the higher the wages are for workers everywhere. That's a fact, and no economist would deny that. Um, and it's a sad reality that President Obama is not standing with the people of Wisconsin. But we are at the move to amend the alliance. 
for Democracy is standing, and, and we hope that, uh, I think that there are rallies going on all across the country, and on April 16th, there's going to be a fantastic rally, and I hope that people in Portland will, will come out and support not only the workers of Wisconsin, but support yourself. If you eat, if you depend on work to eat, then you need to get involved in this movement. Absolutely, absolutely. Well stated, well stated. While we're talking about unions, mm -hmm. if corporate personhood was eliminated, how would that affect the unions? Well, it wouldn't affect the uh, unions in the sense that unions could still come together and advocate for better working conditions, for for uh, better pay, uh, et cetera. But at Move to Amend, we are actually clear. We don't believe that any entity should be able to have inherent constitutional rights. People would still have uh, the right as individuals to organize, and uh, uh, to, uh, that would actually not be affected at all, but it would mean that, that laws could be passed to restrict both corporations and unions from spending money in elections. I think that would actually be an improvement. Number one, unions will never be able to actually match dollar for dollar uh, corporate America. The Chamber of Commerce uh, probably alone is able to to spend half a billion dollars on elections alone. Unions will never have that kind of money. But even better, it would allow us to have fully publicly funded elections to get private money completely out of the process. There shouldn't be corporate money. There shouldn't be union money. Uh, when it comes to elections, only ordinary people ought to be talking to one another uh, in order to actually uh, make these kinds of determinations. And if unions want to continue to go and knock on doors, that's fine. But they shouldn't be allowed to actually spend money in elections. Mm -hmm. Many people say that actually corporate lobbyists are our, are, are, are our government, but because we only have a voice when we elect officials, we don't have that constant pressure or presence in Washington, D.C. and in our state capitals that actually corporate lobbyists and the corporations they, they represent are, in, in fact, our government here. Well, I think that's right. I mean, uh, at our core, we have to understand that large transnational corporations are not just exercising power today. They are ruling us. As surely as masters once ruled their slaves, as surely as kings once ruled their subjects, unelected and unaccountable corporate CEOs are making the fundamental public policy decisions that affect our lives. They're making the decisions about what kind of health care we get or evermore what kind of health care we don't get. They're making the decisions about uh, what kind of transportation choices will be available to us. They're making the decisions about what the energy policy is of the United States. Hell, they're making the decisions about whether or not this country goes to war. You know, all of the really big decisions are being made by these corporate CEOs and the number of corporate lobbyists in at our state capital and in our, in our nation's capital uh, outnumber our legislatures uh, 10, 20, 30, 50 to 1. I mean, uh, and, and ordinary people are not able to actually lobby uh, our own elected representatives at that same level. So if we're going to actually make this, the promise of the United States of America is a, as a democratic republic. It is a fantastic promise, but we have not fulfilled that promise yet. And again, at the move to amend, we are calling for a democracy movement that will make the promise of a democratic republic a reality. And I'm urging your viewers, join this movement at the local level, the Alliance for Democracy and the Move to Amend chapter. At the very least, go to that website, www.movetoamend.org, and sign up and get involved. Great. Good. We uh, have a couple of books which we want to recommend to people, uh, and these books have to do with corporate dominance and the questions about corporate, um, corporate personhood. The first one is this book by Tom Hartman called On Equal Protection, The Rise of Corporate Dominance and the Theft of Human Rights. This uh, is an excellent, excellent book with a broad overview, uh, very readable. Uh, I highly recommend this book. The, the second book is, is uh, Ted, Ted Nace, uh, Gangs of America, the rising corporate, the rise of corporate power and the disabling of democracy. Both of these books give good overviews of the development of corporate personhood, the role of the Supreme Court and their decisions in, in making these kinds of decisions uh, and getting us to the spot that we're at now. So I highly recommend both of these books to give a broad overview of what we've been talking about with David Cobb here today. Um, what other kind of political kind of reforms should we be 
uh, advocating and moving toward? Well, you know, David, I think that uh, the constitutional amendment against corporate personhood is one of those linchpins, but it's not enough. I'm not going to suggest that all of our problems would be solved. Uh, but it, actually, we have more solutions that are being implemented now because we, the people, don't control our own government. Uh, if we did, we could have publicly funded elections to make sure that we, the people, actually were protecting the infrastructure of democracy. We could have instant runoff voting and proportional representation to ensure that all people People felt like they actually had representation in their government. And of course, if we had uh, instant runoff voting or preferential voting, we'd have more civil discourse during the election process. We'd guarantee a majority winner with just not one election. If we had proportional representation, we'd have coalition governments where people would actually have to find ways to work together across the aisles. In addition, uh, we need deeper uh, policy changes. We need to wean ourselves off of the addiction to coal and fossil fuels, which is fueling the uh, runaway global climate crisis. Uh, we need to treat health care as a fundamental human right rather than the, the commodity to be bought and paid for at a profit. Let's be clear, the Obama health uh, care plan is actually nothing more uh, than a forced purchase of corporate insurance. Uh, we need uh, to dismantle the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. We need to end the Federal Reserve and create a national bank in this country so we can have a democratic control of the money supply. Uh, we need to raise the minimum wage to a true living wage so that everybody is able to raise their families and live in dignity uh, with meaningful, productive work. We need to invest in the infrastructure of this country with bridges and roads and, uh, you know, we need a mass transit system across this country. We have more solutions. Uh, than are being implemented because we don't control our country. But if we build a movement, we can take our country back and do the work that we need to do. Okay, very good. What you missed there, if I can, please, is taxing the wealthy. Oh yes, right. tax the rich. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Del. Right. Ta tax yes, the rich. Right. Yes. And we could solve all of our budget woes. Actually, uh, study after study shows that all we would have to do is return to the pre-Reagan uh, tax rates for both wealthy individuals and corporations, and all of our budget crises would be solved, both at the state level and the federal level. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yes. No, I think I just read uh, a study recently that suggested a 14 percent surcharge on the incomes of the wealthiest two-tenths of a percent? Yeah, we're talking about millionaires. Top, millions, absolute millionaires, uh, would be enough to wipe out all of the budget deficits for all of the states. Just like, like that. that. Right, yes. And of course, then another one would be uh, a war profits tax. Uh, again, you know, it's another example, David Delk, that, that, that uh, there are more problems besetting this country than we deserve, and fewer solutions are being implemented than we deserve, all because a few ruling elite have hijacked our elections, they've hijacked our media, they've hijacked our legal system, they have literally taken our country away, and it's up to us to take it back. Right. We've been talking with David Cobb today. Uh, David is the chief uh, spokesperson for MoveToMend.org, a uh, citizen's movement to amend the Constitution to rid us of corporate personhood. I want to thank our crew today. Our crew is Joan Horton, Janet Morris, Dave King, and, um, and uh, Roger Bates, and we wouldn't be on the air without them. I hope that you will join us again next week. We'll see you then.